faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day be only Christ. That's a two. May thy rich grace impart strength to my faith in heart. My zeal is far. As thou hast died for me, O oh, me, my Lord, to thee, pure woman, let's be a living fire. When life's dark, miss I tread, and griefs around me spread, be thou my guide, be darkness torn today, wipe sorrow's tears away, no let me ever stray from thee last answer now when ends life's trials and dream when death's cold solemn stream shall be Then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above our so so. Amen. Amen. Good to the Lord and thank Him tonight for bringing us again to his presence, to consider his word, and to be blessed. So pray for yourself that the Lord will bless you tonight. The Lord will identify you. The Lord will see you tonight. And the Lord will single you out for blessing. God will single you out for blessing tonight. The blessing of heaven will reach you tonight unquantifiable blessing limitless blessing rare blessings of heaven God will bestow unto you tonight that the pleasures of God and of heaven be fulfilled in your life tonight in the name of Jesus Father we want to thank you for your people who are here tonight Lord for every one of us here tonight, I pray for a singled out blessing. A blessing that is specific to each and every one of us. A blessing that is unique for every man and for every woman. A blessing that the world will see and they will say, definitely, he has visited Calvary. Definitely, God has visited him. Definitely, the blessing of God abounds in his life and in his home. So let it be tonight. At the end of the service, let that be our testimony. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for honoring the Lord and being here tonight. It's great to be together again. We still want to talk and get ourselves ready for the days ahead, but please understand that as we prepare for the convention, you need to understand that the blessing of God does not wait for just a specific day. Amen? So as I talk about your faith and your readiness for the convention, understand that that also means you are ready for blessing tonight. Amen. So don't transfer the blessing of today till the convention day. I believe God has asked something specific for you tonight. Amen. And that's why he wants us to look at the word of God together tonight as our faith looks up to him. Unwavering faith and God's unfailing promises. Unwavering faith, that's what we are looking at tonight. Faith that does not waver. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 20. Hebrews 6, of course, the epistle of Paul to believers in to the Hebrew believers is an enriching one and all through the ages it has encouraged believers and I am believing that you will be encouraged tonight as we talk about unwavering faith now the faith is for now and also for the days ahead amen as I've said so don't consider this as just preparation for the convention. Of course, it's a preparation for the convention, but also it's a preparation for something special for you tonight. And God will grant that to you in Jesus' name. On wavering faith, Hebrews chapter 6, we are beginning from verse 13 all the way to the end of the verse, that's verse 20. Hebrews chapter 6, we are looking at the 13th verse. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. So as you look at that word of God, it's talking about God's unfailing promises. God made a promise to Abraham. And God said, surely, so come to the New Testament, that word will reoccur again. It may even reoccur as verily, verily, I say unto you. Which means God is confirming that without any shadow of doubt, his blessing will always be upon his people, his obedient people. And Abraham happened to be uh, a personification of the obedience of God, of, or the obedience of men with relationship to God. So, he says, when God made a promise to Abraham, God could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely, without any doubt, in blessing, I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, now you see, he's giving us two dimensions of it. There is the God dimension, God's unfailing Promises, And then look at Abraham's side now, the unwavering faith in verse 15. And so, what that means is, as a result of the unfailing promises, now you see a demonstration of unwavering faith. And so, after he, that is Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Amen. He patiently endured. That's the faith we are talking about tonight. The faith that endures. The faith that is so resolute and is waiting for the manifestation and the fulfillment of God's promises. Now verse 16 is now trying to now apply it in a way. It says, for men verily swear by the greater. But God cannot swear by anything greater than himself. Because he's the greatest. So he can't swear by anyone else. When you want to swear or you want to say, you know, by so and so, this will be done. You are looking unto God. You are trusting God. Of course, as New Testament believer, we know that we don't swear. Praise God. We only affirm. We say, well, 
as God liveth, by the grace of God, I will do this, I will do that. So, there is no swearing. That, I believe, you already know. But, he's just basically telling us, in the Old Testament, the understanding of the finality of an issue or a matter is, they swear by an oath. And God tried to make Abraham understand the finality of his word, swore to him. And we are told because there was no one greater. You swear by a greater person, a personality. And God, being the greatest, swore by himself. And so, giving Abraham an assurance. And on the basis of that assurance, Abraham responded with unwavering faith. The application there is that there are promises of God that are made unto you. Amen. Amen. God had made great promises to us. And those promises will come to pass. Those promises will be fulfilled in our life. So we should have no reason to waver at all. And I pray you will not waver. And I will not waver. And God's grace will keep you and I even to the end in Jesus' name. So we see very clearly here that we need to apply that to ourselves. It says, men verily swear by the greater and an oath. For confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Just giving you an explanation. Wherein God will more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability, the unchangeability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable, unchangeable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge. To lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the foreigner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Because we are talking about just faith, we are going to conserve ourselves to the area of faith tonight, the unwavering faith and the unfailing faith promises God in our dealings with God. Unwavering faith must match up to the unfailing promises. Both of them has to go together. The question is, what does it mean to be unwavering? It means you are steady. You are resolute. You know, you are not changing your opinion. You are fixed. Just like the psalmist will say, my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. You are not halting between two opinions. Whatever God has said, you take it as the finality. And you have no reason to doubt. You are resolved in whatever you want to do that God is all. You are firm. You are constant. You are steadfast. You are enduring. You are abiding. You are unswerving. That's another word for it. Unflattering. Untiring. You don't get tired. Because it gets to a point when, after a long while, you begin to say, well, is this ever going to get done? And then you get tired. But think of Abraham. Anytime you are trying to get tired, 25 years, he got the, he got the promise, but it was never fulfilled, but he was not tired. You will not be tired. Amen. I said you will not be tired. Unfaulting, unfaltering, untiring, or tireless, indefatigable. That's the big word, but it just means you are resolute, you are strong. Unyielding. You are not changed by enemies. You are relentless, unremitting, unrelenting. You are sustained. I mean, any of those words you want to pick that meets your fancy, that makes you understand faith, you know, in the way that we are talking about it, though that's the right thing. Unwavering. You said, no matter what happens, I believe God. I trust God. And then as you look at God, the unfailing God, Actually, when you look at the unwavering and the unfailing, they almost go hand in hand. They are almost the same meaning. But let me tell you the meaning of unfailing without error or fault. That's, that's, that's what it means to be unfailing. You cannot fail because there's no error there. There's no fault. You are faultless. But also it means you are constant. You are reliable. Something that is constant and unreliable. I, I mean reliable. Dependable, steadfast, steady, endless, undying, unfading, inexhaustible. That's what unfailing is. So the promises of God cannot fail. For that reason, you too will not fail. 
you remain steady. You say, in as much as I know God can't fail, I'll just remain there. You know, even in human beings, there's a way we have confidence in human beings that we are so sure they cannot fail. How much more of God? You know, I told us a story, I don't know if it was Sunday or, or the last Friday or the previous week. I told you about two individuals who were friends and there was a war, right? Two soldiers. And one of them was wounded and he was lying down there. And everyone else evacuated. But the other guy thought, my friend is still over there. I can't find him. And the general was saying, why are you going? Why will you even go? Why will you risk your life? Everybody else over there, they are all dead bodies. Why will you go and look for dead bodies? The guy said, I have to go. Well, he didn't even listen to the general. What I'm saying is that there are even people that you think can com- convince you and tell you, don't worry, you will never get done. Why are you worrying yourself? You know, just like Job's friends. They seem to know everything. They seem to understand everything. And they will tell you, don't, don't worry about it. This thing is a done deal. You know, doctors will tell you, it's a done deal. Don't worry yourself about it. This can never happen. And you tell yourself, no, I know it will happen. And at the end of the day, the young man went there, met his friend, and as soon as he lifted him up, he looked at him, he said, I know you will come. What a faith. Just, that's human. I know you are going to, I know you will not leave me here. At least you will get my dead body out of here. Even though the man still died, somebody risked his life just to retrieve his body. He still couldn't make it, but at least there was that confidence. Now, if man can have confidence in another man, I think God is much better. I said God is much better. We should, we should trust in God. We should believe him. Whatever promises he has made for us, let's trust him, let's believe him. He will make it good. I said he will make it good. Your prayers will not be in vain. Your tears will not be in vain. All your expectation and hope in God shall not be in vain in Jesus' name. The Lord will come through for you. So unwavering faith and God's unfailing promises are two things that you and I need to hold on to. Bible says without faith, we cannot please him. So the very first thing we need to understand, point number one is understanding faith. In God during crisis. Let's talk about that. The very first point. Understanding faith. Because crisis will come in life. But when crisis come, how should you handle it? When you have challenges, how should you handle it? Just have faith. Amen? Just have faith. Just trust God. Because God will surprise you. Surprise God and let him surprise you. Amen? Amen? Let God see in you that you are a man and a woman of faith. That you trust him so much that no matter what comes. Listen, brother, it takes a lot of faith for somebody to go into the lion's den and stay there. We talk about Daniel, but sometimes we don't think about his faith. The faith of Daniel was the kind of faith that says, I know God will fail. And then he went to the lion's den. And until he got to the lion's den, we didn't know that God could keep the mouth of lion. Until he did it, There was no way to prove it. There is a way your faith will prove the immutability of God. Amen. Amen. There is a kind of faith you demonstrate and the whole world will hear that your God is alive. I pray God will give you that kind of faith. So as we look forward to this convention, that's the kind of faith I want you to ask God to give you. Faith that is unshaking, unwavering, steady, constant, reliable, unfaltering. Faith that says God will do this. Faith like that woman whose husband was already in the mortuary for three days. And he says, and they said there is a, there, there is a crusade in town. He said, give me my husband. The doctor said, you must be crazy. He said, no, I'm, yes, I'm crazy, but spiritually crazy. There's a kind of craziness that is required for you to get some things done. And the crazy woman carried this dead body in a, in, in a, in a you know, and, you know, they carry this table to, to a crusade guard. It's like, what is going on here? I mean, that's totally crazy. But there's an element of craziness that people need to get certain things done. Amen. Amen. You know, all of this that we are shouting, we need miracle, we need miracle. You know, there are some things we can do that will provoke the miracle. Oh, I'm not hearing you now. Amen. There are some things we can do, and God will be forced. He will, his hands will be forced. But you know, we are too westernized. We are too decent. 
Did you hear what I said? We have become too spiritually decent that we, we don't know how to provoke God to do certain things. There are things you need to get done and you have to provoke God to do it. And God says, I have no choice. This has to be done. And as you look at the cases of people in scripture that actually got the supernatural done, yes, they had to provoke God in a good way, of course. That's what I mean. God looked at you and he said, no, 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 no. This is, be, this is totally beyond normal. This is beyond. He says, great is thy faith, woman. I mean, you see those guys who was trying to bring the man to Jesus and they couldn't, and they had to go and open the roof. I mean, that's, that's extraordinary. That's totally out of it. They opened the roof, they dropped the man down. Jesus said, ah, this one is beyond it. Or when everybody, you know, everyone, Jesus is coming, everybody's waiting, and this man said, I'm too tall, I'm not going to see this man, but I need to see him. He climbed a tree. It's extraordinary. And you have to understand who he was at that time. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He wasn't somebody that everybody loved. But yet he said, I have to see Christ. And he climbed a tree. Something extraordinary. Something out of what you normally do. That God will see and he says, yes, this person is desperate. A desperate faith. That says, this has to be done. It must be done. And it shall be done. I pray that God will give us that kind of faith during this time. This kind of faith must become your attire. It's something you wear at all times. It's not something you have for some moment and you take it off. No, it becomes your attire, your dress. What you go about with. It becomes your identity. And this kind of faith is an adhesive. You know, it's like it glues you more and more to God. You are getting closer. In everything you are doing, your nature is becoming like God. It's an adhesive. Getting you, not that you are far away, it becomes a point of attraction. That when heaven sees it, it cannot look away from you. Amen? When we start praying, I'm going to read some passages because I don't want to start going to those examples. But we're going to use those passages to pray very soon. But when heaven sees those kind of things, it says, wow. You see, some of the great men that we know about, there are some things they did. You know, some of them, they are not very open to tell us. But many a time when they tell us what they did that made God to favor them, then we understand why they are he heavily favored. I pray heaven will favor you. Amen. I pray heaven will favor you. Amen. I pray heaven will shine on you. Amen. I pray you will provoke heaven to miracles and signs in Jesus' name. Amen. So, this faith must become your attire. Look at what Romans 4 says regarding, I'm just talking about our understanding of faith in God during crisis. Again, still talking about Abraham here. Look at Romans chapter, chapter 4 rather. Romans 4 verse 18. Romans 4, understanding faith in God during Christ. That's the point we are looking at. Romans chapter 4 in verse 18. He says, Who against hope did what? Believed in hope. Because we are talking about the faith of Abraham now. Against hope, he believed in hope. You know, there are some things, they are so hopeless as hopeless is. In any human circumstances, there is no way you want to even consider them possible. You said, there is no way here. Every place you have gone to, they've told you, is, there's, there's just no way. I mean, what else can you tell somebody when somebody is dead? Two, three days. I mean, what else do you want to see after somebody's been dead for three days? There's no way, there's no way to, there's nothing to talk about. But to still hope in that situation, that's something serious. But now, think about Abraham. We are talking about being dead three days, right? Abraham's body and his wife's body had been dead like 50 years. Really, if you look at it. Maybe Abraham could still be alive a little bit, but that woman's been dead for a long while. Biologically speaking. 
But against that, they continue to hope. Amen? So, whatever you may have given up concerning yourself, maybe your spiritual life, or ministry, or family, or children, you consider them, you say, God, these ones are not even going to bother me in my relationship with you. I consider it dead. I pray they will come alive. Amen. Because these are issues that should come alive, but because you just said, naturally speaking, this is a dead issue. Let's just leave it. You know, think about it. Ezekiel 37. You look at the bones. You look at, you know, femur. You know, arms. Everything is there. There's nothing. It's just bones. Can you ever consider that to come alive? Of course, no. That's why Ezekiel said, God, only you know. Humanly speaking, I can't even give you an answer. Thou who knowest. God, you are the only one who knows. Same thing with, uh, you come to the New Testament in John. And Christ was talking to Peter. Lovest thou me? And he asked him three times. At the end, Peter said, if you ask me this three times, God, thou knowest. You know all things. Because obviously, questioning me three times means my love is dead. But you can bring it alive. And God brought it alive. And God will bring you alive. Amen. I said God will bring you alive. Amen. You know, our spiritual life, sometimes you even question yourself. I used to be like this. I used to be this. I used to be, but what is going on? It's like, I'm not feeling as alive as I should be. But I believe God, you will come alive. Amen. During this season, God will bring you alive. Amen. You look at the church and you said, how can we turn people around? To love God like in the beginning or even much better. I believe God can do that. Amen. I believe God will do that. Amen. I have hope in God that he will do that. Amen. That's what this passage is saying. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become. Listen, for you to become, you have to hope against hope. That he might become. Because what you want to become, that's the will of God. So for you to be in the will of God, whatever is dead has to come alive. And God has power to make those things come alive. So this is the kind of faith understanding that you need to have. Because the Bible says, concerning Abraham, it says, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. He considered not. He's dead, but he considered it not. That's the understanding of faith you need to have. He consider, don't, There are some things you don't just consider. Physically, yes, you can see this is dead. The bones, they are all over there. There's nothing joined together. Everything is all scattered. But God says he will come alive. And so you've looked around and it's like everything seems to be dead, scattered, no light. But listen, there is a God that quickens. There is a God that makes a light. There is a God that brings possibility out of impossibility. And that God is still alive. If you join your faith with him, it will bring things alive for you. And I'm praying that in this season that we are in, God will bring things alive for you. I said God will bring things alive for you. So our understanding of that faith must be like Abraham so that we can enjoy the kind of blessing that Abraham enjoyed. He staggered not. Look at that, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God. That's the definition that we just talk, talked about, unwavering faith. A faith that is not staggering. A faith that is steady and resolute. A faith that is not wavering. A faith that is fixed. A faith that is resolved and constant and firm is staggered not at the promise of God. That's the unfailing promise. He considered God's promise unfailing. And so he treated it as such. Amen? Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's the problem with us today. So much unbelief. But God will take them out. But he was strong in faith. You will be strong in faith. Amen. Giving glory to God. 
and being fully persuaded, that's the wavering faith, fully persuaded that, that what he has promised, that's talking about the promise now, he was able to perform. There will be a performance in your life. There will be a performance in your family. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. So this faith that we are talking about, it's simply, when you look at the definition of it, it's a conviction of the truth. Conviction, your conviction in your belief. Your trust and confidence in God. With relation to God, this is the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things and is supreme and is the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. See, every one of us, when we go to work, we have faith that our employers will pay. Amen? And the Bible says God is not unrighteous to do what? To forget your labor. And it's not unrighteous to forget his promises either. It's not unrighteous. So if we trust our employers that they will pay us, we should trust God more. Amen? Because we are so sure that the employers will be there, but you and I understand the employers are there temporarily. They are not always permanent. I've told you this story before. You know, I was working in a place that I thought I've gotten a good job. And one day I got in, and then I met on my computer a pink uh, post-it note. See your manager. And there was no reason for them to, I mean, I didn't do anything else. I just got in and I saw that everybody was crying. A lot of grown-up people were crying. But I was wondering why they crying. What is the problem here? So I went to the manager's office and the manager was, you know, apologizing profusely. I'm very sorry. This is not about you. It's not about your performance. Uh, we are having some financial trouble and we had to lay some people off. This, this, and that. I said, so, that's okay. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, it's okay. He said, you know what? Uh, you just go home in the evening, come back. I said, no way. I'm not coming back here. When I get my bag, I'm out and I'm, you're not going to see me here anymore. I said, since that day, that's probably 2000, year 2000, if I remember clearly. Year 2000. I never went back there. I just told them, whatever you are owing me, you feel you are owing me, just mail it to my house. That's okay. But grown up people were crying because they are, all their hope, hope was what? In that job. And it's like, where am I going to get another one? But I was so sure I would get another one because a month later I got a job that was $10,000 better. I was that confident that God gave me this job and if he allowed me to lose it, he had something better. And truly, that was it. I got a better job in a better place. Praise the Lord. So our confidence should be like that in God. Confidence should never be in man. So when our faith is in God, whatever happens around us, you just say, well, if God allows it, then something better is coming. Steady faith. Unwavering faith. Believing that the promises of God in my life will be yea and amen. Amen? Amen. And nothing else. Yea and amen. That's what it's going to be, and it will be so. So with relation to God, it's our conviction, total conviction that God exists, is the creator, is the ruler, is the provider, is the bestower of everything, all that I need, God will give it. And in relation to Christ, as we talk about this faith, our understanding should be a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah, is the provider. Is the sustainer, is our friend, is our savior, and he will never allow us to suffer. Bible says he is touched by the feelings of your infirmity. So if he understood what you are going through, then definitely he knows how to take care of it. Just have faith in him. Amen. Amen? That's the kind of faith I'm telling, telling, telling you about tonight. And as the man of God is coming, of course, tonight, you will enjoy that faith. Amen. As you exercise that faith, God will answer you. But in a greater measure, as the man of God is coming, I want you to keep building that faith up. To get something supernatural. Something extraordinary. I want this church to be turned around as a result of this convention. Amen. I want us to enter into a new realm of possibility. As a result of this convention. 
I want you as a person to do what? To enter a new realm. Not just us, but you. Because when I say, I want us to enter, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you, your family, your children. Transformation. Spiritually. Financially. Career. Every all around transformation. God will give it to us. Amen. Please understand that when you display your faith, you provoke God to act. When you display, when you put your faith on display, you make God to act. That should be your understanding. If you display weakness and faithlessness, you tie God's hand and he cannot act. The three Hebrew children said, we are not going to bow down. In the book of Daniel, we will not bow down. Because our God is going to deliver us. And then they said, let's even say he didn't deliver us. The alternative would be to die and go and meet him. That's better than bowing down. There can't be any other expression of faith than that. The faith was so strong that it provoked heaven and had to bring Jesus down. I pray that kind of faith will be found in us. Amen. I pray that kind of faith will be seen in our midst. Amen. The three of them were so that nobody dissented. There was no dissension. There was nobody who was saying, oh, are we not going too far? Uh, this man is a wicked man who is going to kill us. Why are we doing what we are doing? No! The three of them were so resolute. I, I believe in my heart that this church can be so resolute. Amen. I said we can be so resolute Amen. that we believe that God is going to come down Amen. and do something special Amen. in our lives and in our midst. Amen. That this program will be the beginning of transformation and turn around for every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that. And please believe with me. It may look like a tall order, but my God is, tall, is taller. Whatever, however tall the, the trouble is, God is taller than it. God is ahead of it. Amen. And I know with him all things are possible. Amen. So, when you allow faithlessness, unfortunately, your, your doubts are on display. Number two, you displease God. Your doubts are on display, and then you displease God also. When faithlessness and unbelief is out there. But by the grace of God, that will not be your portion. Amen. That will not be our portion. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Let's go back there again. Hebrews 6. It says, Verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Your faith must come to a point where you say, God cannot lie to me. God is not a liar. What God has said, it will come through with it. Amen. And it shall be so. Amen. Because God told Abraham, you will have a child. Abraham said, God, please, I understand. You know, I know myself. I know this is not going to be possible. Looking at myself. Uh, this Eliezer is good enough. That's okay. God says, no. I'm not talking of a servant in your house. I'm not telling you a parable that, you know, you're going to have a child and then he's substituted by, he says, no. He's going to come out of you. Amen? Amen. That's what God told him. That's what God is telling you. Amen. That as you manifest faith during this time, God will do wonders. And it begins tonight. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear you now. Amen. I said it begins tonight. Amen. God will do wonders in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. The wonders of understanding the faith in God during the time of crisis. When that faith, when you stretch your faith beyond even your own imagination, he allows heaven to manifest on your behalf. Amen. Let's read Jude. 
Jude. Beloved, in verse 3, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you that you exhort, to uh, write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly. That's, you are stretching it. You are stretching the faith beyond the normal. There's a regular faith, there's, but there's a faith like that faith of Abraham that is stretched beyond normal. It means in the normal course of life, this will not happen. But because God is involved, it will happen. That's stretching your faith. Because you are bringing God into the equation. And as you stretch your faith, God expects that your crisis will begin to shrink and your dry doubt will begin to shrink. Amen? Amen? Because you can only be effective when you allow your faith to be stretched. If your faith is never stretched beyond the ordinary, all you get are ordinary things. But when your faith is stretched beyond the ordinary, extraordinary situations become possible for you. And then you are able to master your situation. The situation doesn't master you. Amen. I pray it will be so for us. Amen. I say it will be so for us. Amen. And then you discover that your confession will be different when your faith is stretched out of the ordinary. It even affects your confession. Your confession is no longer negative. It is positive. When people say, as they said to that woman, is it well? You answer, it shall be well. It shall be well. You are not bothered by the situation. You already know that the child is dead. But you are telling yourself, yes, physically the child is dead, but the child will come alive. That's a faith that is stretched. And brother, if your faith is never stretched, it will, not, it will not achieve supernatural. Allow your faith to be stretched. Allow it to be stretched. You know, some, I've told you this story because somebody being been told that as a child of God, whatever you ask God, you can raise the dead, you can heal the sea. And he said, oh, really? Okay. After service, he went out and he's looking for a dead body. That's, that's an extraordinarily stretched faith. He so believed that this word of God I was told is going to be like that. He was going around until about 4 30. And he got to a place where somebody was there. And he says, What is going on here? They say, There's a dead body. <laughs> he said, Praise God. Finally, I found one. And people were saying he must be crazy. And when he started praying, it wasn't that right away because he has great faith, then the healing took place. No. His faith was continually stretched. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. It is at that time people will say, "Ah, okay, am I not being unreasonable? This person is dead. Why am I even doing like this? And then you start reasoning. That's the point you don't even go to. Don't even consider it. That's the, that's the he considered not. There are things you will never even consider. So what the man did was, he said, okay, that place where Jesus raised the girl. What did Jesus do there? So he looked. Oh, he said, oh, now I see. Jesus didn't allow all the doubters to be with him. So he went back and he said, everybody in this room, get out. He sent them out. Then he, he remained there with him. He started praying. Brothers and sisters, did he get the result? Yes. He did. He did. He raised that child. Not because he is endowed with anything different than you and I, but he was willing that his faith be stretched. You know, it gets to a point where it becomes, you become ashamed. Eh? You say, oh, shame will be catching you. Oh, God, what if? No, the man was not considering what if. He was convinced that this child will, will rise up today. And he was not going to leave until that child rise up. What if we pick an issue tonight and say, let's keep praying until God answer. You know, it gets to a point where everybody says, Pastor, I think you're going to be the only one here tonight because I'm going to work. See? 
That's the challenge. Then everybody wants to go. Then it remains you. And if care is not taking you to say, oh God, everybody is going, it's me only. No. If you have faith in God and your faith is stretched, you just keep going. It doesn't matter how long. You just keep going. I pray our faith will be stretched that way. I pray God will give us an elastic faith. Amen? Amen. Say, God, give me elastic faith. A a, a faith that is stretchable. If your faith is rigid and it can break easily, then you don't want to be stretched. But an elastic faith is a faith that says, if I have to pray for the next three days, I'm going to be here. And we're not going to leave. You know what? It gets to the point where everyone says, You know what? (laughs) Let's answer these people because it does not look like they're going to give up. It took some time for him to raise that that child, but he did. And after that, several children he raised up. Because now he has gotten to a point where he says, this is my own bread. I can eat it any day, any time. Just bring dead body. I will raise them. But it didn't happen by just sitting there. It happened by his faith being stretched. So, the understanding of the faith I'm talking about now is a faith that is stretched. But then, number two, you join it, point number two now, with unfailing and fulfilling promises of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. Fulfilling promises of God. That you know that in Christ everything is yea and amen. Praise the Lord. In Christ, you said Christ has He has done everything, and so there is no reason why it will not be fulfilled. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith. Of Abraham, who is the father of all, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Let's stop right there. I have made thee. Listen, when God says, I have made thee, the man had not a single child. How do you think about that? You know, it's like God told, just tell us now. Deeper life, St. Paul. I have made thee a church of 100,000. You know, some people will say, Pastor, you know, the man can dream a lot. You know, he's thinking so highly. No, he's not thinking highly. It is what God said Amen. that will come to pass. Amen. And then you don't go and sit down and say, God is bringing it. No, you start, you start work now. You now start acting like a man who is ready. I told you about young Gisho. You know, I've read so much about him lately. Every time I come to a point like this, his example comes in. He said, God, all I want is 300 people. God says, no, I'm not giving you 300 he said, I'm going to begin with 600 and something. I mean, 6,000 plus. He said, but God, I can't handle 6,000. He said, don't worry. Just trust me that I can do it. And God gave it to him. After God gave him 6,000, God said, okay, now believe me for 10,000. I said, no, God, that one you first did is good enough. Let's stop at 6,000 and let it be. Praise God. I'm just saying this to say that when God make a promise, if you and I put on failing faith, on wavering faith, and we join it with his promises, it brings great dividend. Amen? That means everybody wake up and we say, this is what God said. We are walking towards it. Let me ask God's question, brethren. How did deeper life become what it is today? Do you think it's just person Kumuyi only? No, he shared what God told him with other people and they believe it. And he said, let's rise up and start doing it. And they started, and the 50 of them started by just telling somebody. Praise God. Some of the things God wants us to do is not something extraordinary you can do. Just tell somebody. The next person you meet, say, ah, God is doing great things in our church. Please, come and see it. Oh, for you, you may think God is not doing great things. Even just the word of God you are hearing, that's great. That's all they need. Because the Bible says, faith comes by Hearing and hearing. And people are not hearing anything out there. People are not hearing anything. And so, if we have faith in that word of God, we just, we just say, oh, the word of God we are hearing, God is doing. Let's imagine, imagine if you can fill this place up on a Friday. Do you know that it even has an effect on the preacher? 
Can somebody say amen? Yeah. When you see new people, it has its own effect. Because you, the Lord will just make you to do some things that you ordinarily don't even do. And you say some things that you ordinarily don't say. And it will connect. And when those people's faith are established, they want to go and bring more people. So, it profits all of us to want to take the word of God serious and bring people. Because the more people you bring in, the more excitement. Because now the preacher says, what am I going to tell these people again today? I'm not coming with stale news. I have to find a new way to reach out. And then there will be more prayer. And the more you are having then, all the sections where things are not seem to be moving, then you see people now who are available to pray. Praise God. So, Mark, you see, is it because you don't know administration? If you don't know it, God will teach you. Again, pardon me to say this, young Gisho said, I had no clue. He said, because I didn't go to school. I had no clue how to even preach. I don't even know what I'm going to preach. I don't even know how to lead people. So I was so scared. That's why I told God, God, give me 300, that's good enough. For the rest of my life, I'll be fine. He said, because I'm scared. He said, I was so scared to even lead people. Till today, he sees anything, he's scared. He said, because you know what? There are some people in the church, they know more than me. When I say something and they don't like it, they get up there, I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> with 100,000, with 1 million members, the man is still scared. He said, because there are some people who are more, you know, they have more understanding, they have more intelligence, they've been to school, and so I'm careful what I do. He said, some of those dickens, oh God, when we come to a meeting and dickens are there, I'm like, oh God, please deliver me from these dickens today. That's a man that God has you, and he has not lost his humility. Amen. He has not said, ah, now look at what God has used me to do. Now I'm a great... He said, no, I'm still scared. He said, when well, finally God still told him he's going to have a one million church, he was telling God, please, we are done with this. Please stop bringing new things. He's already at 700, 800,000. And God is saying, we are going to one million. And he said, please, God, please, let's not go for it. This one is good enough. He has not lost his humility because you see, when you are dealing with God, there's a way God just keeps taking you, He keeps moving you, and He'll get you to where you ought to get to. Amen. So, the reason why I went there is that we, we may not have all the administration of what is needed, but you know what? When that time comes, God will even bring the administrators. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those who are going to take this session, you don't even need to think about it, it's already done. You don't have to say a word, they know what to do. God will bring the sons of Issachar. Those who know the administration of time. Those who know what we need to do. God will bring them. So, you know what? It's, not, it's no longer about a man. It's about God doing it. And I am praying God will get us there. Amen. I said God will get us there. Amen. Where we all rise up and we know this is what needs to be done. And the moment we all rise up, you are going to see God rising up. Amen. You rise up, God rise up on your behalf. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Unfailing and fulfilling promises of God. Number three, unwavering faith in growing challenges. Unwavering faith in growing. There will be challenges. Please don't say God don't give us challenges because challenges stretches people. When you have challenges, it makes you to think. When things are just normal, ordinary, you just sit down and say, "There's nothing new." Challenges brings the best in people. When there is no challenge, your best can never be seen. If they challenge you at work, you give, you know, you do something, you give it to, to your manager and he says, what kind of nonsense did you do? Go and get me something better. Do you come back and then give him the same thing? No, you go and sit down and find a better way to do it. Same thing. It brings out the best in us. Unwavering free. When there are growing challenges. Right now, this is a challenging time for the church of God. But that should not make us to be afraid and say, what are we going to do? What do we need to do? It should make us pray more. To make us to trust God more. To make us to have faith more. And believe God that greater days are ahead of us. Amen. You, know, you know the story of 2 Chronicles 20, 20, right? Jehoshaphat, right? He said, oh God, we don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. Because the enemy is much worse greater. And God says, you don't need to worry. All you need to do is just get some people to be singing. Just get some people to be... You know, you will think God will give him a general that we, you know, they map this, they map that. There are some things that you don't even have to think about. You just let God. But you see, unless God says, do it that way, if you do it that way, it's just you. That's just your method. But God says, just go and pray, praise me. 
appoint people who will praise me and let's see what's going to happen. The strongest army of that time was defeated by them just praising God. Amen. So challenges brings the best in us. And we are in a challenging time, brethren. You can write that down, 2 Chronicles 20, 20. We don't have time to read it. You know the story of Daniel too. I've said that over and over. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. You can write that down. And then verse 26 to 27. First Samuel 16. Let me read that one. First Samuel. When our faith is in God, you are going to discover that it brings the best out of us. First Samuel 16, verse 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Now, how did that happen? Look at verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, a mighty valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Now, the story here is about Saul himself. But at a very challenging time in his life, God brought the, the person that needed to be brought. Somebody who is going to help him to have solution to the challenge of the time. That's how God works. Amen? Amen. If you put everything in God's hand, God is able. Amen. I said God is able. Amen. So as we look towards this coming program, let's put everything in God's hand. Amen. Because we may be asking, how are we going to do it? It's not us. I never wake up one day and say, oh God, stressing. Hey, this area, I don't, even, I don't even stress a second. Why? It's not of him that will it. Of him that run it. But it's of God that showed mercy. God will help us. Amen. I said God will help us. Amen. And he will assist us in Jesus' name. Amen. His grace will be sufficient for us. Amen. And God's grace shall be sufficient for you. Amen. And for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 26 of chapter 17. 26. And, and David spoke to the men that stood by him saying... What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You know the story again. A challenge that stretches the whole nation. And at the appointed time, God raised up a man that is going to take care of it. Happens to be a boy, not even a man. A boy, a teenager. And God had people in his hand that he can use at all times, in all situations. We just need to pray that God will fish them out. I said God will fish them out. That they are not just like David, they are consigned to just uh, be raising the sheep somewhere. They are really empowered by God and God will raise them up for such a time like this. The Lord will lay his hand on them and the Lord will bring them out. And you know, the only way God can really resource people is that when they are dutiful in the little that they are doing. Amen? Because David was responsible in the little he was doing. They didn't ask him to go to the war from, so he stayed back. And then when the father said, take food to your, uh, to your brethren, he could have said, food to my brethren, but they didn't want me to go, so whatever is happening there, I don't care. But whatever daddy says, he just goes ahead and carries it out. Whatever daddy says at this time, let's carry it out. I said, whatever daddy says at this time, let's carry it out. And when I say daddy, I mean God. Praise God. I said, whatever God says at this time, let's just carry it out. Let's do our best. Go out and give people flyer. Don't say they will not receive it, they will. Don't say they will not remember, they will. Leave the negativity aside. Just go out and do your own part. Trust God that he will bring them. And when God brings them, he will use them for his own glory. Do we believe that tonight? Rise up and let us pray. Rise up and let us pray. Let's bless the Lord tonight. Let's bless the Lord tonight and bless him and glorify him and magnify him for his word of encouragement tonight. Mark eleven twenty two says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. Thank God for faith in him and in his son tonight. Say, Lord, 
help me to possess faith. Help me to be an embodiment of faith. Help me to demonstrate faith at such a time. That Jesus said, have it. You, it is something you need to have. You need to possess it. It must become you, your embodiment. Faith in God. Have faith in God. Say, Lord, help me tonight. Help me during this season to possess faith, to have faith, to lay hold on faith. Lord, fear will not dominate me during this time. I will not be afraid. I will have faith. Faith that moves mountain. Even when I don't understand how it's going to be done, I will just obey God. I will have faith. You know, the leader says, let's go out. We go out. There is no argument of, I wish you all that is going to work. Don't worry about that. God will make it work. There is nothing. God is able to make all grace abound unto you. God is able to make all things work together for good. In as much as we are doing it for his glory, he knows how to turn it around. Let us pray. Father, help us to have faith. Help us to have faith. Whatever we are asked to do in this time, Father, give us faith. Give us faith. Help us not to do anything by doubt, by unbelief, by, by criticism, by, you know, reasoning it out and say, you know, Jehoshaphat, just go and get some people to sing. God, get some people to sing. You know, don't you know that people we are facing, they are great army, they are this, they are that. No, just have faith. Just have faith. Just have faith. Say, Lord, help me to have faith. Lord, I need faith. I need faith. At such a time like this, faith to possess. Faith, O oh Lord, to receive. Faith, O oh Lord, Father, to be made what you want me to be. Have faith in God. Jesus looked at that and said, have faith in God. Have faith. Have faith. Father, let my faith be in God. My faith is not in me. It's not in my uh, process. It's not in my method. It's not in my resources. It's not in anything. It's not in the name of the church. Our faith is not even in our leader. Our faith is in God. Our faith. Lord, I pray. For this season of our life. For this season in our ministry. Oh Lord, help us to have faith. That's what Jesus, it was the recommendation of Jesus today. He said, have faith in God. Just have faith. That's all you need. Father, tonight as you recommend to all of us, we want to have faith. Help us to have faith. Help us to demonstrate faith. Give us the grace, oh Lord Father, to demonstrate and to live by faith. Living by faith. At this time, oh Lord, at this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. The faith that gets things done. The faith that produces. The faith, oh God, that allows God to be at work. Father, we pray that you will help us to possess it. The faith that brings God into our situation. The faith that allows the hand of God to be at work. The faith that releases our doubts and gives God, oh Lord, an open door to act and to work on our behalf. Father, we are praying for that kind of faith tonight. Ground it unto us. Open your mouth, brethren. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Maybe you need to even begin to pray for us and say, Lord, give me the spirit of prayer tonight. I don't want to be tired and weak and yawning. Give me the spirit of prayer. Father, grant me. He said, have faith. Well, have the spirit of prayer too. Pray for the spirit of prayer. Have the spirit of prayer. Pray with wisdom and with understanding. Pray in the spirit tonight. Father, we want to pray in the spirit. We don't want to pray just ordinary prayer as usual. We want to pray according to your word. And all these passages of scripture we are going to be using. Oh God of glory, help us, help us, help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have faith in God, Jesus said. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Father, help us to have faith. Help us, O oh Lord, that our faith will come alive. Our faith will come alive. Our faith will come alive. Why? Because verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall have faith and say, because it takes faith for you to be able to say something, and it comes to be, oh God of glory, I pray. Let me have the kind of faith to be able to declare your word, and it is so tonight. In the name of Jesus, the faith to believe that whatever I say, whatever I declare, whatever I, oh Lord Father, I tell people that it shall be so. When I declare your word, let me have faith, oh Lord, even to declare the word. Let your word that come out of my mouth go out with faith. The faith of God, the faith of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Luke chapter 5 verse 20. And when he saw their faith. Hallelujah. When he saw their faith. Father, you will see our faith. Father, our faith will be identifiable. Open your mouth and say, Father, my faith will not be hidden. Jesus saw their faith. It means when Jesus comes to the midst of people, he is looking for their faith. Father, you will find faith in me. Remember he said, when the Son of Man shall come into the world, will he find faith? Oh God.
God of glory, as you visit us tonight, as you visit us every day of this month, especially during our convention, you will see faith. There will be an identifiable faith. In the life of our children, there will be faith. In the life of our men, there will be faith. In the life of our children, oh Lord, and our women, there will be faith. Our leaders will have faith. Father, you will identify the right faith. Faith that gets stopped on. Faith that believes in God. Faith that trusts in God. Faith that is that holds confidence in God. It shall be seen. It shall be seen. It shall be he saw their faith. Father, I pray. The kind of faith you will see in me will be the right kind of faith that gets the job done. The faith that gets it done. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Father, the kind of faith that will be seen in me. It will not be a, a, a wavering faith. It will not be an unsteady faith. It will not be a staggering faith. But a steady, solid faith. A firm faith. A faith that is resolute and reliable. A faith that you can rely on. Oh God, I pray tonight. Let that be my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, Amen. Until Jesus sees faith, he doesn't say anything. Praise the Lord. When he sees unbelief, it's a restraint. So because he saw their faith, he said unto them. But let me give you a particular of an individual. Mark chapter 5, verse 35. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith. Personal. In the previous example, he saw their faith. Collaboratively, congregationally. As a congregation, God will find faith in us. Amen. As an individual, daughter, son, God will find faith in you. Amen. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord about that. Open the, the, your mouth and talk to the Lord. And he says, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Father, as a result of manifesting faith, I will receive something. Thy faith has made me whole. The faith of God will bring wholeness. Father, as a result of manifesting faith, I receive wholeness tonight. In the name of Jesus, let there be wholesomeness in every life, in every man, in every woman. As a result of the manifestation of faith, wholeness. Oh God, you said I will give them health and cure. Father, I pray tonight, as your children manifest faith, there will be health and cure. There will be deliverance, there will be breakthrough in every area of their life. He said, daughter, thy faith. Personal faith. Personal faith, that's different from congregational faith. He saw their faith, but here he saw her faith. Personal, personal. Lord, I pray for me personally tonight. Uh, help me to manifest the kind of faith that gets something. The faith that gets something. Holy Spirit divine, grant it unto me tonight. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Because he said unto us, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Amen. Amen. For someone tonight, go in peace. Amen. I said, go in peace. Amen. Be made whole of any plague, Amen. of any disease, of any sickness that is upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the situation may be in your life tonight, thy faith will bring the healing. Amen. Will bring the solution. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. let it be so for you. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We worship you tonight. As a result of faith in your daughter, in your sons. Father, I pray, let there be wholesomeness. Yeah. Put an end to every plague in Jesus' name. Yeah. Every sickness in any life, Lord, we command that it come to an end tonight. Yeah. Lord, let them cease tonight. Yeah. Let the regime of plagues and sicknesses cease tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, For therein, that is in that faith, is the righteousness of God revealed. Revealed. When we have faith, it brings revelation. Amen. Amen. So we are going to ask God, Father, give us the kind of faith to receive great revelation. We need great revelation for yourself, for your family, whatever it is you are trusting God for, for your ministry. Ask God, Father, the kind of faith that gets revelation. He said, from faith to faith. 
Father, I want to move from faith to faith. That means there are categories of faith. Father, I want to move to greater faith. Jesus Christ told us, say, great is thy faith. That means that's, that's a different level, a different level of faith. Father, I pray, move me from faith to faith. Oh, Lord, that will get me to great revelation. Apostle Paul said, I, I came to great revelation. He said, there are things God has revealed to me, I can't even tell you. Because God found in me the kind of faith that will allow this revelation. Oh, God, I pray tonight for me and for everyone here. Grant us the grace to begin to see. Oh, Lord, a revelation of great things. A revelation of great things. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, brethren, if you are going to become anything, God has to reveal it to you. If the thing is not revealed to you, you can't become it. Something you don't accept, you cannot become. Did you hear what I said? If you reject something, you cannot become it. If you say, I don't believe in that, yes, yeah, that's true. You see, and God wants to do great things, you have to, he has to first make you believe. Pardon me again, I go back to your young issue. He said he had to come to a point where he had to repent. I said, okay, God, this is what you want to do, I accept. If you want to give me 6,000, I accept. If you want to give me 10,000, I accept. He said, that prayer, I don't even know how many times I pray. He said, because when I accept for 10,000, when God says 20,000, I will say no. Then God will have to convince me. Then I'll go back and say, God, I am sorry. Uh, this is my faith. You know, I'm just, I'm just okay with this 10,000. Why do you want to bring more? God says, no, there's still more people to reach. I'll put you in a position now where you can reach more people. So, accept with me and move forward. He said, okay. He will say, okay, God, I'm sorry. Then he will accept. He said, the moment he accept, just from nowhere, people will be streaming in. And then suddenly you'll be hearing, you'll be asking after Sunday, what's our attendance today? We added 1,000. What's our tender? We added 2,000. What's our, he said before I knew it, within a space of time, two, three years, what God has said will come to pass. Amen. What God has said to you will come to pass. Amen. What God has said concerning us will come to pass. Amen. That kind of faith that gets God moving will be found in us in Jesus' name. Amen. From faith to faith. Faith for greater things. Faith for the supernatural. Faith for the, the extraordinary. Open your mouth and say, Father, grant me that kind of faith. Not a static faith. A faith that is moving. A faith that is progressing. A faith that is receiving greater things from God. A faith that doesn't say, God, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with where I am. You know, this one you are giving me, I'm okay. Yes, that's the human side. But God says, I still want to do more. Uh, that you will have faith in order to allow God to do more in your life. You will have faith in order to give God a chance in your life. Open your mouth, please, and pray. God, please help me, help me, help me, help me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Revelation from faith to faith. That Father, I will live by faith. He said that just shall live by faith. Father, from today, let me live by faith. Let me not live my life by doubts. Let me not live my life by unbelief. Let me not live my life by fear. Fear of this will happen. Fear of that will happen. Fear of this, this and that. Father, let me live by faith. Trusting and believing you that all things are possible. Oh God of glory. Whatever it is the enemy is planning. Faith we, we destroy it. Faith we overcome it. By faith we overcome every difficulty. It doesn't matter what the enemy is planning. But by faith we overcome. Father, we overcome by faith. We overcome by faith. By your grace and by your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our faith we overcome every challenge in our life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. He said, and so were the churches established. Acts 16.5. The churches were established in the faith. But do you know what follow after that? And they increase in number daily. Praise God. They were first established in what? By faith. By faith. Until the church is established by faith, there cannot be any increase. Because it takes faith to believe God that he can increase. If you don't believe God that he can increase, it's not, if it is not done, it's not because he cannot do it, it's because you are not believing so we as a church must believe God he can increase us. Brother, are you hearing me tonight? Yes, I said, are you hearing me tonight? I want everybody to rise up. Rise up, rise up, everybody, everybody, get up. Get up, get up, get up. This is a prayer of agreement. Get up, get up, everybody. Every individual, children, wake them up, wake them up. Wake them up tonight. Before we go, we are going to pray this prayer. We are going to tell God, as a church, we agree. Yes. Uh, can I hear you? As a church. As a member of this church, I believe and I agree that God will increase us, that God will make us to multiply, that God Almighty will visit us, and He will break every yoke of stagnancy. 
Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. If that's the last prayer we pray tonight, that's okay. That's okay. God Almighty, we believe, we believe as a church that you are going to move us from faith to faith. You are going to help us to live by faith. You are going to increase. It says the church was established by faith. Father, establish us in the faith and cause your church to increase. We believe that word. We trust you for that word that it shall be done. That it shall be done. We as a church together tonight, representing even those who are not here tonight, Father, in agreement of faith, we say it is possible that we are going to increase as a church. We are going to move forward as a church. Every one of us, we are in agreement that God will do it. And we trust God to do it. And we have faith, oh Lord Father, to believe it. And we are willing to work with God that it will increase us because we are told the church of the early days, the church of the Acts, they were established in faith and they increased in number daily. Father, we believe you for that. We believe you for that. We believe you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will continue in faith. We will be established in faith. The souls of people will be confirmed in faith. Oh God of glory, that you will do your wonders in our midst. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray your church, your church will be established in faith. Established in faith. Established in faith. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Finally, Romans 16 26 says, But now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. There are things that God needs to make manifest. He says, Through the scriptures, they were made manifest. He says, and they were, but now, that is presently, is made manifest. There are some things that presently should be made manifest by the scriptures of the faith, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Hallelujah. We will have obedience of faith. We will have obedience of faith. And then we will enjoy the fruit of the obedience in Jesus' name. Let's pray and tell the Lord, the church of God, your family, your you individually, obedience of faith, obedience of faith. You will be obedient to the faith. And as a result of that, you will enjoy. Say, Lord, give me the now faith, the present faith, the effectual faith, the persistent faith, the permanent faith, the prevailing faith. Father, let what the scripture says be made manifest now. What the scripture says, let it be made manifest now. Now, let the scripture of faith be fulfilled now in my life. Let the promises of the scripture be fulfilled and manifested now by healing, now by faith, now. The scripture of faith, let them be fulfilled. The healing that comes through it, let them be fulfilled. The miracles and signs and wonder, let them be fulfilled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Every candidate for healing here tonight, we decree by the blood of Jesus, receive your healing in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Receive the touch of God. Receive the visitation of heaven. Let the miraculous begin in your life now. Let the miraculous begin in your families now. Father, we want to begin to testify to your miraculous power. Oh God of heaven, we pray and ask the power of faith. Let it be manifested. Let it be manifested in every life, in every family. In the name of Jesus, give praise to God tonight. Bless his holy name. Thank him. Thank him tonight. Thank him tonight. Thank him tonight. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Father, we believe you by faith that the miracle has started. The supernatural has started in every life, in every family tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree, oh Lord, Father, according to your word, that Lord, your people, your people will begin to see the manifestation of the scripture of faith. They begin to see the manifestation of the word of faith, the word of healing, of deliverance. Oh God of glory, we believe and trust you. Oh Lord, for the supernatural, for the extraordinary in every life and family tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you the glory. We give you the glory. From now on, we have the attire of faith. We have the identity of faith. We are adhesive, oh Lord Father, to the power of faith. We become a point of attraction to the God of faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God will, oh Lord Father, single us out individually. 
for the power and the working of faith in our lives and families. Blessed be the holy name. Blessed be the holy name. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what will be made manifest. Thank you for your glory that shall be revealed. Lord, we will give you praise. We will come back to testify to the glory of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Everybody say unwavering faith. In God's unfailing promises. That will be your portion. And it shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.